about what evidence of understanding I see. And so take advantage of this time to write notes to yourself because as we go over some details from this demonstrated understanding, I've given it back to you. I already have scans. I don't need it back, but most of us don't even have that demonstrated our understanding on our desk. So how are you going to put extra notes on there or notes somewhere else? Like, update your knowledge with whatever you need to. Okay. I've already given it back to you. Um, by the way, listen. There is, in the kindest ways, no excuses for not knowing what the representations are. Like, you, you got to at least be able to identify what the representations are. What are the five mathematical representations we have talked about? Graphs, tables, algebra, so graphs, tables, algebra, verbal, and pictorial. Guys, those are the five mathematical representations. Tables, graphs, algebra, pictures, verbal, your words. We should have those answers for A, for all of these. Numbers one through three, what representation is that? Guys, it's a graph. It's literally got an X and Y coordinate, or axes. It's got a graphing coordinate system. Some of y'all picked up and recognized that and talked about that. That's great evidence. There's X and Y coordinates. There, there's an X and Y axis. It's called a coordinate grid. Those are graphs. Yes, sir. Uh, three, or four through six, what are you looking at there? It's algebra, guys. Algebra, by definition, is our equations, expressions, inequalities. Brady, you write any of this down if you miss some of it? Didn't I just say that? I would have my demonstrated understanding out. I would write these notes out. So, we got graph, we got algebra, right? We got those equations in there. And then what is 7 through 9? Tables. Literally, it's a column of inputs and outputs, right? It shows them next to each other. So tables, we got to know those things. Now, we do have at least one group who did ask about explaining function versus not a function. Now, I hope we remember this. What defines a function? So one input maps to one and only one output. That is the definition of a function. If I were you, I would have used that definition on almost every single one of these. That, that is what defines a function. Now, which representation can you most clearly see the inputs mapping to the outputs? Tables. Tables, right? I need y'all to look at 7 through 9 really quickly. Seven through nine. Oh, appreciate it. Guys, which of those tables does not fit the definition of a function? Number eight? Why, why not eight? Two included. Negative two maps to eight and fourteen, right? That's not a function yeah, at all. Notice negative four also maps to two outputs. Now, I need y'all to be careful. Because you know what I had a whole lot of us tell me this type of function was? Linear. Linear, right? But didn't we just say that it's not a function? So how is it a linear function if it is not a function? Some of us would think it like that. Because it was plus three, plus three, I think it's linear. But, Vakari, what did we just say? Is it a function? No. So can it be a linear function? No. Guys, linear, exponential, quadratic are by definition functions. If you actually have a line, it looks like that. If you actually have a line, it looks like that. If you have an exponential, it looks like this. And a quadratic, it looks like this. So when we say linear, when we say exponential, when we say quadratic, by definition, those are things are what? Functions. So on number eight, when it's not a function, 
Is it linear, exponential, or quadratic? No, no. it's not. It's not. No. So, by the way, did I ever say you had to keep your relations as tables? No, you did not. I did not. Okay? Is that what you were What does D mean on D? D was developing evidence. Did you have that earlier? D. Oh, that's what you missed. Got it. Okay. So, sorry, I was looking at what Chelsea did. And this is something that would have been a great idea for a whole bunch of us. One, two, three, four, um, and we go, I'm just going to go by threes. Three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen. So you're just going to estimate, but negative four, five would be somewhere in here. Negative two, eight would be somewhere in here. Zero, eleven here. Negative two, fourteen here. And so first off, like right away, I want y'all to notice here, does that look like a line? Uh -uh. What does that actually kind of look like? What did that look like? Like a parabola. But notice, is it going up or down? No, no that, this is actually known as a horizontal parabola. However, is it a quadratic function? Notice if you had made a graph, yeah, it violates. Hey, what is that line test just vertical there? Line. Uh, so vertical line. That test is called a vertical line test. Remember, a vertical line, if a vertical line touches more than one point, that means that one input has how many outputs? Two. Two, right? If you have a vertical line that touches more than one point, then that means it is not a function. One input maps to more than one output. Yeah. So, first off, I get why we saw the plus 3 and we thought it was linear, but this was to test if we actually understood what a function was and what it meant to be linear. If you check the x, is that a constant additive rate of change right here? What was that question? What did you say? If you check the x, is that a constant additive rate of change? Yes. The x, plus 2, plus 2, minus 2, minus 2, that's the same? Oh, but you, but is so. adding two and subtracting two the same? No, it's not adding. Same, so it's, so the, it's the it's the um it's the um the inverse of um adding, it's subtracting. So what remember we just looked at it right here. I didn't even pay attention to that. My fault. This is not linear. It doesn't have a constant added rate of change. It is a um, horizontal parabola. Right. So once we say it's not a function. Am I going to call it linear, exponential, or quadratic? No. So on C there, I would say none because it's not a what? Function. Write what he knows you need to to your future forgetful self on B or C there about number eight. What's up, Duan? Is horizontal pro, um, parabolas covered? Like say again. Learned about horizontal Pre calculus. Right, right, right. We take that. After algebra two. What? Ooh, that's next year. You don't have to take pre-calculus. There are other options. There's a mathematical modeling class, a finite math class, finite AP finance. statistics. There's dual over shelf. There's lots of options. You got finance on it. Yeah, I don't think they're gonna have finance after this year. I think the senior class is the last class that can do finance. Last I heard, at least. All right. Um, any questions about eight? Anything as we're updating our notes or understanding? Going once. Okay. Luke? Oh, going twice. So, all right. Um, how to read quadratic tables. Okay. Which of these tables, by the way, was quadratic? Because I see that question, how to read a quadratic table. Then one which one Well, those are the only tables. Uh, number nine. Number nine. Number nine. nine. Yeah, I mean, don't ask that one because I can really do the equation of quadratics. You don't need an equation. Bakari, I told you that yesterday. We weren't oh, yeah. writing equations. We're just determining if they were quadratic or not. That's it. Oh, yeah, I remember that. No, What's the rate? So, guys, don't forget, when you have a table, and make a note to yourself if you missed this. Brady, where's your demonstrating understanding? Why did you put it away? We ain't done. If you got a table, what should you be looking at to determine if it's what type of function it is? Constant multiple. 
Click it in or cross it back. Or at least look at your rate of change. Or what else can you do? Make a graph. You can make a graph. The rate of change is your best bet on a table, though. If you didn't know that, above the tables, I would say check rate of change. That's a no to your future forgetful self to improve your understanding. All right. And it's not just the Y. You've got to make sure you check the X as well. But when I look at my Y, what's happening to go from 2 to 5? Adding. Adding how much? 5 to 11? Did you say? 11 to 20? And then plus 12. Plus 12. So be careful. I saw someone who put plus 13 here and it messed them up. Be careful. Now, obviously, I need y'all to remember that term constant. What does the word constant mean? Repetitive. Repetitive. Doesn't mean repeated. repetitive. Repetitive. Say again? Constant. Yeah, but what does that word constant mean? Um, the rate of change. Uh, right. um, linear rate of change. Oh. Okay, so staying at a certain. Guys. All right, let me ask you this, constant. If you're driving down the road at 40 miles per hour, and then you speed up to 60 miles per hour, did you stay constant? Okay, what do I need to be driving later to stay constant? Oh, so to be constant, it has to stay the same. Okay, constant literally means to stay the same. That's the word constant. Like, break the language down. Constant means the same. Is that constant? No. But what's happening to go from 3 to 6? It's increasing. By how much? By um, 3. 6 to 9? 3. 9 to 12? 3. three. So okay. is this constant? Yes. And what are we doing with that constant thing? We are additive. Right? Notice, that's what I mean when I say constant additive. Constant stays the same. same. Adding, we're literally, or additive, we're literally adding. Additive to one? Come on. <laughs> but if this is constant additive, what is this purple piece right here? What type of function had a constant additive rate of change? Oh, Lydia. Hold on, Jamie. I haven't gotten to that part yet. What type of function had a constant additive rate of change? Oh, linear. Linear, right? So this purple, it's not a function, but it is linear. What are we doing? Added. Adding, Additive. and Additive. that is the rate of change. <laughs> Guys, break down the language for what it says. A linear has a constant additive rate of change. So this is constant additive. The purple is linear. We're adding, and it's the rate of change. It's not, I'm not, I'm trying to demystify it, make it make sense. Show that on your paper so you can learn from it. If you didn't, huh? So if it's a mystery, it's this weird thing that we don't understand. D means to get rid of, right? So demystify. Make it easy to understand, hopefully. Okay. So, quadratic table. If it is a quadratic table, it has a... Linear additive. And some quadratics are easy to convert to a graph in C. This one's not, because I didn't give you the vertex and I didn't give you the x-intercepts but it is quadratic based on the rate of change. Okay. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Well, what makes a quadratic quadratic? It's quadratic because it has a linear additive rate of change. And then show me the linear additive rate of change in the table. Right? Notice, the rate of change for a quadratic is not constant. The rate of change for a quadratic is linear additive. Okay. So um, there's that. There is a constant multiplicative, but we're not multiplying here. I know I'm saying, but that was like a times times. Yeah. By the way, guys, number seven. Listen, y'all are killing me. This is not times two. Sixteen times two does not equal eight. Divided by two. We're dividing by two, but remember, I recommended a different way to write it because it's a times b to the x. So it is a constant factor. What is the constant factor? Sixteen. I mean, remember how you just said divided by two? Four. Four. 
Bro, one half. One half. Two. Oh, Dude, stop oh, screaming. Guys, you guys, you need to roam, bro. <laughs> guys, listen. Cursor? You just said division, right? Yeah. What's a symbol that shows division? A divided by. Fraction oh, fraction ball. That's why I told you all that from the beginning that I used that reciprocal because that fraction bar literally means to what? Divide. To divide, right? So yes, I'm dividing by two, but that's the factor that I would want for this equation. On top of that, we've done this multiple times now. 16 times F would end up equaling what? Eight. Solve that equation with your calculator. 32. No, no. No, 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 no. Divide by 16. No, 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 no brother Ben, brother Ben. I was, I was, I was, I was divided to get 16. Okay. I didn't mean to say that out loud. I can't change that. Notice if you type that into the calculator, you know what you're going to get? One half. One half. One half. Oh, my God. It, it doesn't have to be a mystery. If you follow that step and write down 16 times F, and then you have that 8 there, and you write that equation, you solve that equation. You divide. Use the reciprocal. To find your constant factor, use F to represent factor and set up an equation. Don't make it harder than that. All right. By the way, I do want to point out, because this is exponential, is it a function? Yes. Right? Once I know it's an exponential function, it is a function. Now, focus on the definition. That's number one. Um, I saw some people asking about... Quadratic equation. Who asked about that? Several. Several. You talking about that? Yeah. Guys, which of these is quadratic? Uh, six. Why would six be quadratic? Two x and two. I might have brought it too long. Because um, there's a distribution of x to the second power. Guys, if it is x squared, it is quadratic. It's a distribution between. If if the highest power is x squared, it's quadratic. That's it. There's other ways to see quadratics, but that's the main one that I've taught. If you have x squared, that function is what? Quadratic. Quadratic. It's not about this linear piece. Now listen, is there a linear piece here? 100%. But that's not what makes it quadratic. If I write 2x squared plus 4, is that quadratic? No. Does it have x squared? Oh, you said quadratic. Yeah, yeah. So is it quadratic? Yes. If I write just 2x squared, is that quadratic? Yes. yes. So notice it's not about the part after the squared. What makes it quadratic is the quadratic term, the x squared. squared. For it to be quadratic, it's x squared. Okay. So remember, we're not solving quadratic equations. We're just recognizing them right now. We will solve next unit. <coughs> equals none. Um, so... We literally did talk okay. the table. That's did. Um, my, um, my yes. answer. So, really quickly, how to know if a function is none, um, well, if it's not linear and not exponential and not quadratic, then we will say none at that point. But there are plenty of others out there, like, is that linear, exponential, or quadratic? It's not by model. It's not, it's not data. Is, is that linear? Uh -uh. Is it exponential? Uh -uh. Is it quadratic? Uh -uh. It has a piece that looks quadratic, but is that just a parabola or is there more going on? Yes. Two more going on. There's way more going on. That's not a parabola. It's not quadratic. Okay? So there's plenty of other things out there. We just haven't studied them yet. This is known as a uh, radical function, not radical, this is known as a uh, rational function. Is that linear, exponential, or quadratic? No. So that's when we'd say none. Uh, but for the most part, right here, number three, I think is what some of y'all are referring to. Guys, I want y'all to look at number three. What what is that? Um, that's that's a circle. Number three is a circle. Is a circle a line? No. no. Is it an exponential curve? Uh -huh. No. Is it a parabola? Uh -huh. No. no. It's a circle. <laughs> it is not a line. It is not an exponential curve. It is not a cir It's not a parabola. That's none. It's also not a function. 
So remember, you can talk about vertical line tests with tape, with graphs. A lot of us did that pretty successfully. But remember, all a vertical line test is doing is testing that one input. This one input has how many outputs? Two. That's why this is not a function. Any final questions before we wrap up? I think I've hit all of them. Not at all. So you said when I try to solve it, you just trying to understand this part of Say again. So we're not trying to solve it. We're trying to understand it. Yes. Did you see the word solve anywhere on that paper? No. I apologize. Okay. Cameron. I know that. Number 10? Sure. Oh, sorry. One last thing. Number two over there. How to find uh, what relation and equation is? Two things. Two things. If you understand the forms of the equations, it's pretty easy. 3 fourths is multiplied by x. So that, even though it's backwards, that's the equation of a what? And if it's a line, it's a linear function. So you could have said, hey, that's a line, that's a linear function. What form is this? What form is this? That's exponential, right? So it is an exponential function, right? You on B here, you could have said, hey, that's the equation of an exponential function. That's a function. Uh, over here it has x squared, so it's quadratic. But also, could you have made a table? Could you have made a graph? Yes. Yeah. Would that have been strong evidence for what type of function it is or if it's a function? 100%. And all you have to do for that is substitute inputs in. Now, here, for this one, Values like negative 1, 0, 1, 2 would make a lot of sense. Here, though, notice what are we doing with this 3 fourths? We are dividing, dividing by 4. So I'm only going to use multiples of 4 because I don't feel like dealing with fractions, but you got a calculator. You can also graph it. I know yesterday, Tyler, you were trying to graph this one, and you didn't see anything pop up, and it freaked you out, right? Yeah. Hey, guys, that's a y-intercept of 18. You had to change your window. The maximum y value on that graph was like six point something. Just change your window. We've done that. Ooh. If you're not sure how to change the window, so ask. Only we can put like just well, see, but just find it. It's a linear function. So I'm talking about like five. Uh, on number five. Yeah. That's like, evidence why it's exponential. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Cameron, you were asking about number ten. So looking at number ten, what do we see happening here? That's linear. Oh, minus five, minus five. Be careful, it's not minus five. Plus five. Plus five. Plus five. Plus five. Plus five. Notice yeah. it's increasing this way, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's getting less negative, it's adding. What's happening to my x? Plus three. Plus three, yeah. And so I know immediately, hey, that's linear. Y equals mx plus b. Remember, how do we calculate m, the slope? Oh, by the run. Y, the change of y by change of x. Right? So you can do rise by run. You just have to remember y is my rise, x is my run. And so 5 thirds is only my slope. What do I need in order to identify my y intercept? Oh, your y intercept. Thank you. How do I know when I have a y intercept? Oh, when the x is zero. So when your x, your input is zero. Yes. So you can just continue this table. So what's my y intercept? Looking at your rate of change. So now I just kept my rate of change going. Does that make sense, Cameron? No. Well, I need you to understand all of this. Okay. All right, we're going to pick up with the Desmos activity at this point. Please remember, what we're trying to get to is understanding the different forms of quadratic equations. So everyone, every group should have an iPad. Um, we're going to get to that in a second. Before that, though, um, just be aware, what do you have to do before you can be successful at the target portion of these proficiency scales. Study. <laughs> yeah, but you got to have the foundation. Guys, I cannot emphasize this enough. You have got. Excuse me. Thank you. 
Pause. You have got to know the forms of the quadratic equations before you start trying to do the rest. If you do not learn the equations, which no uh, flashcards, Quizlet, what, just staring at the equation, writing it over and over, whatever you got to do, you got to learn these equations to be successful with these next pieces. Then we're trying to get into the target because here's the thing. We want to be able to look at an equation, note, look at the form, and be able to sketch out a graph of that quadratic function using the key features there. Um, and then we're going to get into going from factored form to standard form soon. I'll take that sheet Okay. Yes, I'm sorry. can you give this everybody? Uh, Alright, so Taj is passing out this proficiency scale on quadratic functions. That's what we're trying to get into. Now, did I show you all this page from your textbook that you just tore out yesterday? Tyler, are you awake? I'll put it back up in a second. Hey guys, I and you're just here. Okay. Did I show you all this page yesterday? No. Yes? Maybe? Okay. So, I couldn't remember if I talked about it here or not. First off, we have an equation. What does the textbook identify this equation as? Quadratic. It is quadratic. That's the type of function. But which equation is this? Oh, oh. The standard, right? Okay, so we got a standard form here. This is the form of a quadratic equation. The next one is a times x minus r1 times x minus r2, and that is known as the factored form. And then finally we have a times x minus h squared plus k. And that's known as what? Now listen. We're going to learn what those different values in those equations do. But you have got to know those equations backwards and forwards. Just like when I say a linear equation, you've got to think y equals mx plus b. When I say exponential, you've got to know what equation for exponential. Oh, a times b to the a. Thank you, Dewan, right? When I talk about quadratics, we've got to know those three forms. And so that's going to be a big part of this to understand what these pieces are doing. And the reason I'm pointing out this page, I can't remember if I said this or not, the book straight up says the form of a quadratic function reveals different key characteristics. Just state the characteristics you can determine from each form. By the way that book is written, do they expect you to already know these things? You. Yeah. If they're asking you to just state those characteristics, they, they think that you should already know these details. Do we? Okay. And I'm aware that we don't. That's why I have created or heavily modified a Desmos activity from a friend of mine to help us discover these things better. You need that code? There it is. Hey guys, chill on the fighting. They're just trying to learn cooperatively. Hey, cooperate. Alright, there's the code above those equations. Now, <laughs> this is what you should see when you log in. Okay? Listen, and this is what I need us to get out of this, because we're going to have to raise that in a minute. Every form of an equation reveals different things. When I say y equals mx plus b, what does m reveal about that function? The slope. So the rise divided by the run, or change in y divided by change in x. That's not a mystery. That's what m is. What does b reveal? What does this b reveal? The y-intercept. There's another form known as point slope. This may be slightly different than what you're used to. It's uh, the best form I have seen of point slope, though. Again, what does M reveal? The slope. The slope. The rise divided by the, the, run. the run. Any guesses what X1 and Y1 show? Oh, the, the Y-intercept and the X-intercept. Not intercepts. 
X and Y. X and Y. It's just a point. So when we say point slope, it's showing a point and it's showing the slope. My point is this. Those different values reveal pieces of the graph. So what we're trying to find out today when we come back from lunch is this. What does A in standard form tell me about the graph? What does B tell me about the graph? What does C tell me about the graph? Notice what's the only thing that I skipped? The X. Because X is not a value. X is a what? Variable. Variable. So keep in mind value versus variable. What do A, R1, and R2 tell us about the graph? Right, Jaquel? You said it's all, can you pay attention as I teach? Okay, cool. A, H, and K, what do they tell us about the graph? So the bell's about to catch us, but your job when we come back is to work and figure out what those values tell us about our graph. Ooh, no. With the camera on, it's crazy. With the camera on, it's crazy. Tyler, you want to talk? What we're trying to do is we are trying to find what those values... Dude, this happened multiple times now. You know that that box is sitting there. Uh, we're trying to find what these values and these equations do. So, please pay attention to this detail. On slide two, it tells you that we are dealing with which form of a quadratic function? Standard form, right? It says it right there, standard form. And it has the standard form equation. Pay attention to the directions because when you don't pay attention to the directions, you're doing more than you need to and will get lost. What is the only thing on slide two? The one. What is the only thing that you should be adjusting on slide two? A. A. Do you touch B? No. Do you touch C? No. No. Then notice the directions move to the next slide when you have a conjecture about how A affects the parabola. And guys, there's a lot of answers that you can come up with here. But do notice, hold on one second, if you move to slide three, I have a specific question of how does the graph of the parabola change when blank happens. So what I want you to do is you have one iPad per group because I want you all looking at the same iPad to talk with each other, make sense out of what's happening, and then you're going to write your answers on vertical surfaces. So label it, like slide two, we think A does this in the standard form. And so when you are moving through, don't stop at slide three, move on after you come up with a conjecture. So do you have to have the right answer for what A does? No. no. But I need you to come up with a hypothesis. As always, I'll be coming around, asking questions, pushing on your ideas to help you out. Now, Vicari, don't zoom out like that. Hit the home button. You want it to be zoomed in like this. If it's not like this, you're going to be missing stuff. Make sure you hit the home button and you're looking here. No, Vicari. Right here, eyes. See how it says plus, minus, and then there's a home symbol? That's what I want you to hit. So what are we affecting? What are we changing? A. A. Once you finish slides two and three, are you going to stop? No. No, you're going to keep going. What questions do you have about these directions? Don't worry. Uh, my question is, what is that word conjecture? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Definition. Prediction. Okay. So a conjecture is more than just a prediction. A conjecture is you take evidence and you come up with a prediction, what you believe to be true based on the evidence that you see. So it's making a claim and providing evidence for that claim. So like so, a hypothesis after a hypothesis. Kind of, yes, that's a good way to think about it. Conjecture is close to a hypothesis. But a hypothesis usually is before you have data. Yeah. This is you have data and you're using that data to make a prediction. Okay? All right, what other questions do you have? Let's go to our vertical surfaces. Let's come up with conjectures. You're going to be with the tips right here. No, I'm going to
Hey, Miss Kenny, this one still recording. I know, I'm about to stop it. Can I stop it? No. All right. Nope. There you go. Hey, no. I need you talking about this math. Getting on it that A is changing the vertex, but y'all need to look at this again. <coughs> look at what is on the Shit. screen. I got a call drugs in my backpack. You want one? <laughs> what, uh, what is positive and what is negative? Not the vertex. What? Say it again, Delight. A is positive or negative. Positive or negative is talking about a number, is it not? Yes. Yeah. Right now, my A is. Negative. negative. So let's update that. When, if what is negative, Maddie? If a, a. a is negative. Okay. If A is negative, what do we notice about this parabola? She talked about it over there. If A is negative, the parabola is negative. concave down. down. Look right here. We see the evidence. A is what? Negative. That parabola is concave down. Right? Yeah. By the way, it was concave down like a frown. frown. And isn't a frown a negative thing? Yes. Nope. Yeah. So, so I want y'all to try yeah. to kind of make those connections. Concave down like a frown, that is a negative idea. So if A is negative, the parabola is concave down. down. If A is positive, <laughs> the parabola is what? Concave up. Concave up. And I want y'all to notice here, because Right now, this is not just A, B, and C. What would my equation be for this function based on these sliders? Well, what is A? 1.3. X squared plus, what is B? So 5X. What is C? Plus 4. So this is the equation that is on that graph right now. And A is positive or negative? And because A is positive, that parabola is concave up like a cup, right? So notice that language. If A is positive, the parabola is concave up. If A is negative, the parabola is concave down. down. Okay? At this point, what I need you to do, I need you all, first off, what questions do you have about A and concave up? Do you guys have any questions? Okay, we're going to get some check your understanding soon. I need you all to move to slide four if you have not gotten to slide four yet. And I need you to figure out what C does for that parabola. So, move to slide four. Pay attention to the directions at the top of the slide. I'm getting questions that if we read the directions at the top, would answer those questions. It's a great question. Hold on one second. Okay. No, I said slide 17. Slide four. I like how you do my notes. What? So we noticed, right, was that C in my standard form was determining the what? The height. The y. Yeah. Remember, we wanted something explicit. Maybe the height, but that's not a term. Remember, I said the parts of the parabola. What are the parts of the parabola that we should be looking at? X and Y. X and Y what? Axis. That's not part of the parabola. That's part of the intercept. coordinate system. X and Y what? Intercept. Okay, so we should be looking at X and Y intercepts, right? What else is a key part of the parabola? You're not special. The vertex. What line goes through that vertex? The line of symmetry. And the last thing is concavity, right? These are the parts of the parabola that we should be looking at. And so very clearly, right now I have this equation. Y equals 1.3x squared plus 5x plus 4. And so what is my y-intercept? You can see it on the graph. What's my y-intercept? 0, 4. And I need you all to be careful about this because most people want to say that C on its own is the y-intercept. But the y-intercept is a point, is it not? Yeah. And every point needs more than one number. It needs both an x and a y. And a y. 
But what do we know about every y-intercept that's ever existed? It always zero is zero. X, it always zero. zero. Right? And I want you to think about this because this isn't random. This actually should make sense. If we want a y-intercept, the x is zero. Zero, okay? What is zero squared? Zero. 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 Times 1.3, that's 1.3. Zero, zero times 1.3? Zero. 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 What's five times zero? Zero. 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 Notice if x is zero, what happens to these two pieces? They Eight. become zero. zero, and I'm just left with four. C, the four, right? Quattro. So C is not the y-intercept, but zero comma C, that is. A y-intercept is a point, and so we need to be clear about that in our notes. If you look at your desk, I have given you your next set of Frere models and check your understanding. There is one for standard form, factored form, and vertex form. If I were you, and I was doing notes to my future forgetful self, I would make sure that I have my uh, equation for standard form written down and put what we have now learned. What have we learned about? Which two values? Well, standard form, but which parts of the standard form? It's x and y axis. So, hey guys, eyes and ears, come on. Right here. Which values have we examined so far? We have not done A, B, and C. A, X, and B, X. Which ones did we do? A and C. Guys, we have only manipulated A and C. There was no B in there. She kept throwing B in there. I said it 30 times. Yeah, call for that. <laughs> Listen, okay? Hear me clearly on this. Very often, students want to make B the x-intercept. B is not the x-intercept. B is only related to the vertex. B on its own is not a thing. So don't put B as being something special. A is controlling the what? What does A control? Uh, it controls the cavity. Oh, no. No. Concavity. Say it again? The concavity. the concavity, right? Remember, A controlled the concavity. We have that information written somewhere around the room. The what did C right? control? The y intercept. Intercept, be careful. That y axis is the y axis. It's controlling the y intercept on the y axis. So, update your notes to your future forgetful self on the standard form of quadratic equations. After you are done with those notes, Move on to slide six. So guys, once you are done with your notes, move on to slide six and answer these questions on your vertical surface. No. Why This is a y axis. This is a y axis. The y intercept is the point where the line of the function intersects the y axis. This is the x axis. This is the x intercept. The, x -intercept. the intercept is where the function intersects the y axis. Hey, y'all, are y'all focused on math over on this side of the room? Now I need to get going. Come on, let's go. I heard someone say, and I want to emphasize this, is I heard someone say, hey, I'm still talking. We could just graph this. And guess what? You're 100% correct that you can just graph these things. However, the goal here, listen, the goal is that you can look at the equation and know key details about the graph without using a calculator. Now, could you check yourself with a calculator? Yes, you could. Yes. Now, especially, hey, there's a whole lot of people that's faces are not towards me where I'm teaching, even though they say they're on task all the time. So right here, but you help. I'm trying to teach. So look, 2x squared minus 3x plus 6. What do we know about that parabola? What do we know? Y intercept. The x value is 0. The y value is? And then that's because of the C here. Why is this concave up? What's positive? Keep in mind, you see, that's the issue. A lot of people want to talk about 6 is concave up, but it's A that determines concavity. But, hey, 
ladies and gentlemen. My point is, now I know a little bit about this graph. It has a y-intercept of 6, and it is concave. Uh, that may not be exact, but that has those key features. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, I'm still not done. At this point, you can do the mild and the medium, uh, check your understandings, for the standard form. If I were you, I would do that. Also remember, all y-intercepts are points, so should you have a single value? No. 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 Sorry, you do not have single values. Zero, 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 comma, six, zero, comma, sixteen. 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 Zero, comma, s